Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. My friends, have you ever seen times like these? Uh, this is an interesting time in which we're, we're living in. We see changes taking place in our country. We see changes taking place around the world and we see things going on in the church, things that are different from anything that we've seen or that I've seen during my earthly sojourn. What I'm excited about, however, is that I've seen nothing. I've experienced nothing. I've seen nothing that is not addressed in the Word of God. I want to encourage every one of you to study your Bibles, read the Word of God, stay with God's Word, because God's Word speaks to everything uh, that will take place in your life, and God's Word is a road map. It, it shows you how to navigate, shows you what to do, how to get through, how to get over, how to continue to press through whatever life throws your way, and life throws things at all of us. Now listen, I want you to join me tonight because I have, God has put something on my heart that I think will, will bless every one of you. It has certainly been a blessing to me. I want to talk to you tonight about the power and the necessity of, among other things, forgiveness. Yes, simple forgiveness. How to live without bitterness clinging to you and the bondage that bitterness brings and how Satan will trick you and, 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 and literally uh, make you feel justified in staying in that place of where you're bitter and of where you're bound by something bad someone said, by something evil that someone did, an act of betrayal, whatever. Listen, it is the will of God for you to exceed, to for you to excel. It is the will of God for you to live free. And also, I want to speak to you tonight about the responsibility that each one of us have as a result uh, of God showing us favor. You know, my friends, I've often said this, and I want to say it to you today. With every plus, there comes a minus. And oftentimes we pray and we ask God to bless us, but we seem to forget that with every plus, uh, it comes a minus. With every, the roses have their thorns. It's just the nature of life. I remember when the prayer of Jabaz uh, became a fad in the church and everybody was praying and they were asking God to bless their territory. Now, these same people who were praying that prayer seldom ever prayed the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray, which is called the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, which art in heaven prayer. And so they were asking God to uh, uh, increase their territory. But they forgot that if the Lord increases your territory, he increases your responsibility. He increases, he increases your workload. <laughs> he increases a whole lot of things with increased territory. And some people, as the things that accompany the increase of territory begin to rear their ugly head, they stop asking God to increase their territory. Territory. They say, God, that's enough because I don't want to work this hard. I don't want to do all these things. Well, my friends, to whom much is given, Given, much is required. And I want to show you in the word of God how to handle the favor that God has placed on your life and how to walk in forgiveness. Nothing frees you like forgiveness. So uh, I want you to join me uh, right here tonight. Uh, and then God's going to bless us in a mighty way. Now I'm, I'm listen, I know you've noticed my latest little uh, uh, blessing here, the ornament on my desk. And I, by the way, 
all of the things, most of the things that you see in the background. Now, I'm not talking about the books, but the flags, the, the rainbow uh, signs and all the things that are on my desk. I want you to know that they are gifts. They're, they are, they come from young people. They come from people far and near who say, Bishop Wooden, we, we, we follow the ministry and we wanted to send you this. And it certainly encourages me because it says that people are catching on. People are watching and people are, are taking note. Uh, this is a, a little gift here uh, that was given to me. As you can see, uh, these are bicycle riders. And for those who follow the ministry, you know, I enjoy Bike riding is an excellent form of exercise, and I tell you, I get a chance to en enjoy God's nature, God's fresh air, and I want to thank my son-in-law, Ella John Amanchuku, for getting me, for talking me into getting a bicycle about uh, uh, three uh, years ago or so now. Uh, that was the last thing from my mind, but he's a persuasive young man, and uh, out of that, we have a group in the church called the Upper Room Riders. We we pray and we ride and we celebrate Jesus uh, together. And uh, it's just a blessing. As a matter of fact, it got me through COVID. One of the places that I could turn to where there was no death count, there was no uh, 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 bad news about some virus. There was no, no, uh, people weren't afraid. People weren't walking around shivering with masks on was on the trail, riding the bike, our bicycles with like-minded believers who just believe that God would bless us and keep us and we're breathing in God's fresh air and we're having a ball and we do it to this day. And uh, uh, we dedicate it to the Lord. We're, we're not going to make an idol out of it. And I said to someone, uh, I'm not going to make an idol out of bike riding, and I'm also not going to make an idol out of uh, the number one idol that m uh, many people have in their lives, and that is the idol of being idle. <laughs> You see, my friends, the human body wasn't made to be sedentary and you just sit there and you do nothing and you just, no, no, no. Hey, I want to encourage you. Get up and move. Walk. If, 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 if your bike ride is not your thing, go play pickleball, play tennis, do something. Uh, bodily exercise profiteth little, the Bible says. That is, it profiteth for a short time, but we're only here for a short time. The Bible says our life is, is, is but a vapor. And so uh, for the time of, of our earthly sojourn, uh, exercising and things can bless you. And by the way, when uh, Paul said uh, that bodily exercise profited little, it was being compared to the one thing that everything profited little when compared to, and that is godliness. There is nothing like living for the Lord and walking upright and don't get involved in any kind of exercise or anything else that contradicts or conflicts with godliness. This is why sanctified people shouldn't be participating in yoga. Yoga is a form of worship to a Hindu God. We've taken it in America and tried to secularize it, but I'm telling you, the Hindus want their religion back. So why not do something where you can glorify the Lord, keep the blood rushing in your body, burn a few calories and, uh, uh, and, and feel good. Praise the Lord. It, it lowers your blood pressure and uh, uh, just it, it's a blessing to you. And we're responsible for taking care of these temples. It's not merely superficial. You may, you may be perfectly fine with your appearance without ever uh, exercising or working out or burning calories at all. And I'm all right with that beauty is an eye of the, of the beholder. If you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. But I tell you what, you're robbing yourself of health benefits by not getting up and moving and doing something. Gary, I used to wonder why the senior citizens in holiness seem to be a little more lively than senior citizens in other mainline denominations. Man, I figured it out. They shout. <laughs> 
Don't church mothers, everybody get up and get on the floor and start praising the Lord. And you know what? You know what? It keeps them young. It, it, give, it gives them their flair and their power. I'm telling you, you haven't seen anything like seeing Mother Christian or some of the mothers here at the upper room get up and, and dance for the Lord and get begin to do their thing for Jesus Christ. I get all excited and fired up myself. And I want to say to you, keep on praising the Lord. Keep lifting your hands. Keep standing, sitting, getting up, giving God the glory. I'm telling you, it's good for you. <laughs> I'm getting off a little bit, but the Bible does say that praise is comely for the upright. When you're saved and living holy, you have a right to praise the Lord. This bike here, this little thing, I want to thank the, 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 the member who gave it to me. I really do appreciate it. It says this in Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And I love it because there are times when I'm out riding, I'm with the guys, and we're trying to climb the hill. And, and these guys that I ride with, uh, these guys are something else. And uh, oftentimes I'm praying. Just to keep up, I'm saying, Lord, strengthen me. Lord, help me. Lord, give me strength. And he does it every time. So look, I love you. I'm excited about tonight. I want you to come and hear. I want you to listen. I want you to come and hear what we have to say. And uh, our friends who are uh, you, you're out of driving distance to the service, then we want you to tune in. But either way, join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for, wait for this, Bible study. <laughs> That's right. Bible study. We're going to study the word of God together. And saints, are you seeing uh, the, the shots we do? I ask the people from time to time, who's brought your Bible? Show me your Bibles. The most beautiful thing in church is the Bible. Bring your Bibles. Bring your Bibles. I know you have your word on the, on the phone and all that and, and that. and that's wonderful. I do too. And I use it. And I thank God for the technology. Sometimes, Gary, people think that you're anti-technology when you just uh, when you also just still believe that certain traditional things we should hold to. Uh, uh, when you look at the lack of productivity that we're getting from our educational system, I'm telling you, kids still need books. I think it's being overwhelmingly proven. Uh, 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 you know, in many cases, they've, they've stopped teaching uh, cursive writings. Uh, everybody's texting now. That's a bad thing. It's a bad thing when you don't know how to write a letter. It's a bad thing when you don't know how to write a check. Everything is becoming automated. And as long as the automation works, as long as the power is on, as long as the phone is plugged in and charged, you can, you can make it. But let that, let that automated cash register, let the phone die, let the lights go out. Many of us have lost the ability to think. The brain is shrinking. We're not using it. Uh, our, our, our society was better off when home economics was taught in class. I know it was better off when ethics and uh, uh, politics and these things were taught. There is a dumbing down of America taking place. They're trying to make sure uh, uh, our students uh, uh, are indoctrinated. You know, indoctrinated with certain ideologies and, and, and certain thinking, but they're not learning the basic things that we, that we need to know to be able to compete on a global level with other nations. You see, and uh, I, I, I want to say to you, bring your Bibles. And as you bring your Bibles to church, when we call out the scripture, you, you, you learn so much by having to turn and having to find it. And you're familiarizing yourself with your Bible. And if the lights go out, if the power go out, you still have your Bible. And you can still find the book of Genesis. <laughs>
because you have familiarized yourself with, with your Bible. Some people can't find Genesis and they can't find Revelation. And if you don't get what I'm saying now, that it tells me you don't read your Bible. So I love you. Join me tonight, tonight, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm fired up and I can hardly wait to talk to you about the responsibilities that accompany the favor that God has placed on your life and the necessity, the role that forgiveness plays in all of our lives as we move forward uh, in uh, this world. Join me tonight. Join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.